So as it warms up, our pets start going outside again, and that's when flea season starts for us. Hi, I'm Faith Oy at the University of Florida IFAS Entomology and Nematology Department, and today I want to talk to you about the common fleas that we encounter in the state of Florida. Whether you have cats or dogs, the most common flea you're going to have is called the cat flea. So what's important about the cat flea is that we call them obligate ectoparasites and they feed on blood. So they need the blood of a host such as your cat or your dog or even you sometimes. And usually we notice them as a pest when you start getting bites and start itching. So the life cycle of the flea is very important for us to understand because that is going to help us in getting effective control. The life cycle of the flea is kind of like a butterfly. It's holometabolous and it has an egg larval, pupil, and adult stage. So what happens is a flea will jump on your cat or your dog and it's going to take a blood meal and as it's taking its blood meal, especially if it's a female, then um, she's going to produce eggs that are very smooth and they're going to roll off the animal pelt into the surrounding area. So this is a really important thing for us to know. When you have a flea problem or suspect that you have a flea problem, you're going to be inspecting pet resting areas because most of the fleas are going to be located in, in those spots. The second stage is the larval stage and it's going to be consuming the partially digested blood that the adults are dropping off into the area. So vacuuming is really important for homeowners who want to get rid of fleas. You want to take that bag outside as soon as you're done and empty it so that you don't reinfest the house. The th third stage of the flea life cycle is the pupil stage. Now this is a very difficult stage to control and it's also a very difficult stage to detect because the flea is going to take up whatever debris is in the surrounding area and incorporate it into the cocoon. So the adult stage is the final stage and this is the stage that we see jumping around and also the hardest to control. You may think that just because you have hardwood floors and not carpets that you won't have a flea problem, but this isn't necessarily true. Fleas can get up behind baseboards and are really good at hiding behind cracks and crevices. So you'll still want to vacuum those areas and have your pest control company do a cracking crevice treatment, a very targeted treatment to get control of these fleas. Making sure that you have a good and thorough treatment also means taking care of your pet. Our veterinary faculty have some really good advice for you. Hi, I'm Dr. Dunbar Graham, one of the dermatologists at the University of Florida's College of Veterinary Medicine. Today we'll be talking about fleas and flea allergy in cats and dogs. Fleas are the most common cutaneous parasite in cats and dogs, but sometimes they're very difficult to find. Symptoms that your pet may have fleas typically include itching or excessive grooming. Many times we're not aware that a pet has a flea problem because you don't see fleas. So it's not that you have a flea problem, it's that your pet has a problem with a very small number of fleas. One of the most common symptoms of a flea infestation or even a minor flea problem is itching. And if you don't see obvious fleas on your pet, you should do a flea comb to see if you can find them. And we'll demonstrate that. It can be difficult to find fleas on a dark colored pet, but on a light colored pet, they are actually easy to find. They are very small black specks, and sometimes they move very quickly throughout the body. Easy places to find them are often on the abdomen or the rump of the pet, especially in dogs. Cats can also get them around their neck. So just doing a good look over your pet, starting from nose to tail, is a good way to look for them. All right, we do have a little bit of flea dirt here the little black spot here and this one here. So let's put it on our paper towel. And then I'll just dribble a little bit of water on that. And you can see the slight red streaks pointing that that is actually dried up flea excrement, which is mostly blood from them taking their blood meal. And lastly, a very important piece of information to realize is that cats are particularly sensitive to certain types of flea and tick medication. And medication that's safe on a dog may actually be lethal to a cat. So please always read labels very carefully and check with your veterinarian about products that are safe to use on your cat or in a household that has both dogs and cats. For more information about taking care of your pet, please visit Solutions for Your Life.